Hey guys, Mike from Magnanimous here, and today we're taking another look at the Red V Raptor, the newest iteration in Red Cinema's camera line, launching the DSM-C3. If you didn't see our other video going over the specs and everything that the camera can do, I definitely recommend checking that out. But today we're going to be taking a look at how to build the camera up. So I have the naked brain right here, as you'll get it, with its RF cap on the front, and I wanted to show you how I'm going to build it up for a kind of standard tripod setup. To start, I do like to go ahead and throw on the side wing grips. Without them, the camera is just a little four pound box with nothing really good to hold on to, so it can be a little unwieldy while you're building it up. So to start, I'm just going to set it on its side. I'm going to take one of my wing grips. It has two quarter 20 socket cap screws that come out through the bottom that will line up to the side of my camera here. So I'm just going to line those up. I'll take the included Allen key and I'm going to tie those down. Once that's secure, I'm going to flip it over and I'll take care of the left side. And it's just the same. Just line up those two socket cap screws. Give that a spin to tighten it down. Once that's secure, we will need to add our quick release base plate onto that. And that's just done on the bottom. We have two 3816 and one quarter 20 mounting point. And I'm just going to line up the pen with that quarter 20 and the two 38 screws. And I'm going to tighten those down to secure camera. Once that's secure, I can start to put this on my tripod, but we do want to throw our dovetail on because we're going to put rods on this since we're going to put one of our beefier anamorphic lenses on. We'll want a lens support on there. So I've preemptively attached my tripod plate to our dovetail. I'm just going to go ahead and pop that on. Once that's on, I can take our rod clamp base plate here. I'm going to slide it onto the dovetail and it secures with a locking red latch here. You'll see that secures, it clicks into place, and there's a little button release I can hit to loosen it if I need to adjust. I'm just gonna kind of roughly put that in position. And then our camera mounts very much the same. The plate will slide onto this base plate, and then I'm going to latch it closed with the red release lever. Now that that's on, let's go ahead and get our lens mounted up. I'm using a wooden camera RF to PL lens adapter on the locking RF mount here. I'm going to first make sure our lock is turned all the way. Uh, that would be counterclockwise. And I'll remove our cap, mount up our PL adapter, and then we're going to turn that lock clockwise until it secures to make sure that's nice and snug. We do want our rods so that we can secure our lens support. So I'm going to loosen those and roughly position our rods. I'm going to try and make sure that I have enough clearance in the front to secure our lens support. So I'm going to pull those out just a little bit. Go ahead and tighten back down. And then we have our Atlas 65 millimeter anamorphic here and PL mount. These are a two times anamorphic, which is gives you a good squeeze factor for good flare patterns, as well as the oval bokeh that you expect from anamorphic lenses. Now that that's mounted, I'm going to keep a hand on it and I'm going to pull out a 15 millimeter lens support here. This is just a Y lens support, so it's going to feed up underneath my lens and it's just going to cradle the bottom to help take some of that weight off of that RF lens mount. Now that our lens is on, I can go ahead and mount our top monitor. Now, you do have a couple options for what you can mount up here. We have a 7-inch monitor here, as well as a record start stop top handle. The top handle can go on on its own, but it also can mount directly to our monitor once it's attached. So if, let's go ahead and attach this and we'll mount that up on top. 
This has a registration pen there and two more quarter 20 mounting points. So I'm just going to line that up until I feel that registration pen fall into place. There it is. And I'm going to secure that with my two quarter 20s. Then we have our top handle, which will secure in the two remaining quarter 20 mounts. Tighten that down. And then last but not least, we have a micro V-lock battery here for the back, which I will pop on and we can go ahead and kick that monitor on. Camera has a little bit of a boot up process, but while it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and get my media ready. The V-Raptor has three different flavors of anamorphic capture. You'll have a full 8K, uh, anamorphic as well as a super 35 7k or 6k um, i am set up currently for an 8k 65 anamorphic with a two times d squeeze so now that we're booted up here you can come around and see on my monitor here we get a really nice wide unsqueezed image there if we wanted to have either higher access to frame rates uh, in 6k we can actually get all the way up to uh, 180 frames per second in anamorphic. We could actually crop down to 6K for that. Or if we wanted to use different anamorphics, Super 35 anamorphics that aren't full frame, uh, we could utilize those as well. My media is going to pop into this side over here. There's just a small little red release and my CFast will pop into the slot there. Once that is done, we are ostensibly ready to start shooting. I have my lens, I'm gonna just pull focus manually here, media's in, and we can get rolling right away. If you guys have questions at all about the build that I just did here, or wanna try any of this for yourself, as always, visit magrents.com or just give us a call.